Although they seem strange to us, we must respect the ways of the Indian. Hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? Ah, yes, Indigenous Peoples Day in Democrat Party America and Columbus Day in the real United States of America. Because Christopher Columbus discovered America. He discovered it. It was here all along. But nobody knew. They didn't have telephones and stuff. They didn't have satellites. They didn't have Cherokee people, um, you know, doing albums and big hit songs. They didn't have any of that stuff. They pretty much had, hi, how are you? Which is a good, good catchy tune as well, to be sure. But, well, happy Monday, happy Columbus Day. And if you're a Democrat, what what is this Indigenous uh, People's Day? So the de- for a while to the Democrats, um, America would never have been discovered. And there would still be no electricity and no horses. You know, there were no horses. They'd have no shoes. There would be no shoes. Where do you think shoes came from? First, they had those, those wooden shoes and and stuff. But happy Monday to you. Uh, we were talking in the last hour, in hour number one, about a uh, range of things uh, having to do with a, a lot. A Was he a would-be assassin or was he not a would-be assassin in California? Uh, and there's a lot of back and forth in this and a lot online. And there are, a lot, there are people online who say that they've known this man, Vem Miller, who uh, showed up at the rally in an SUV that was not registered legally, and he apparently had two firearms, a shotgun, and a, a loaded pistol that uh, were not legal in the state of California, and a uh, high-capacity magazine for the pistol that's also not legal in California. And he had multiple driver's licenses and multiple passports. But there are people online who are saying, oh, no, this guy is a Trump supporter. He's long been a Trump supporter. In fact, he had a press pass and a VIP pass for the event for the Trump rally in Coachella, California. And there are a lot of people online who are standing up and say, oh, no, no, no. No, I work with him at America Happens, uh, Vem Miller. And he's worked on documentary films that are anti-deep state films and, you know, documentary uh, videos. And, uh, you know, was he a bad guy or was he not a bad guy? I got to say at this point I'm leaning not a bad guy. I'm leaning not a would-be assassin, but but you never know. And since they, uh, you know, they let him out on on bail almost immediately, mm, the world may never know. The world may never know. We've got all kinds of uh, crazy going on around the country because there are a lot of Democrats out there. And we had Tim Walls, Kamala Harris's vice presidential running mate, loading his uh, 12-gauge shotgun in a pheasant hunt. And I and I said, you know, pheasants are just tiny little things. Because I was thinking, like, pheasant under glass, which I don't think I've ever had. Uh, but I was wrong. Pheasant uh, are larger than, uh, they're, they're uh, kind of big, colorful birds. And they look like they'd be a lot of fun to shoot and kill, don't you think? Uh, and, then, and then you could pluck them and eat them. You could eat them, uh, roast them up, toast them up real good. Sounds good. Uh, but we've got a lot more to get to as well because the news media, for one thing, Mm-mm-mm. Womp, womp, womp. And uh, we've got, uh, we've got uh, J.D. Vance yesterday was on ABC on their Sunday morning show, which is called This Week. It's called This Week. And there, was some, there were some amazing moments with uh, Senator J.D. Vance. And he's uh, there, obviously, because he's President Trump's running mate. And, and you know, unlike Kamala Harris, uh, President Trump, and J.D. Vance do interviews, and they're unafraid, knowing that they're walking into a hostile environment every time. And when Kamala walks in, she gets a tongue bath from head to toe, head to toe, tongue bath. And if there are a bunch of fake reporters, it's a group tongue bath. It's like they really ought to get a hot tub in a room somewhere. But let's go to uh, let's go to this because there's some pretty interesting stuff here, and. and you know, there's this Venezuelan gang, Venezuelan gang called Tren de Aragua. We call it TDA because we abbreviate everything and there's, there's so much a part of our world now 
that we have to use the shortened version of their name. And Trend de Aragua, just to, just to, you know, the, the, I mentioned last week and I think the week before that in the city of Chicago, there are uh, lots and lots of this Venezuelan gang, Trend de Aragua, to the point where there is lots of journalism in Chicago about how the uh, indigenous gang, since it's Indigenous Peoples Day, the indigenous gangs in Chicago, they they are uh, talking about organizing and uh, going after the Venezuelan gang. So a big gang war could be in the offing between local gangs, I'm in favor of the local gangs, versus Trend de Aragua in Chicago, uh, lots and lots of them out of Venezuela, a Venezuelan prison gang and a brutal gang. Now, it's crazy because you see this going on all over the country with Trend de Aragua, but the news media doesn't cover the news. They cover it up, right? There is a story today in the New York Post. Baby-faced Trend de Aragua crew at NYC migrant shelter targets Times Square and they're getting away with it. That's the, uh, that's the headline in the New York Post. It's a today's story in the New York Post, and they've got videos in the Trend de Aragua. You may remember them attacking NYPD uh, officers, and there's video of that. A brutal crew of baby-faced Trend de Aragua migrant gangbangers at a city-funded Manhattan shelter are pulling off armed robberies in Times Square, and they're getting away with it, officials and sources said. Nearly two dozen young migrant thugs some as young as 11 years old, are part of a dangerous asylum-seeking brat pack that has graduated from purse snatching to gunpoint heists. You remember they were uh, stealing the scooters, the electric scooters, and dragging women down the street, stealing their, their purses from them and stuff. But now they've graduated. Now they've got guns and these, these uh, gunpoint heists targeting New Yorkers and tourists alike. Naturally, why would they differentiate? They probably can't even tell they're from Venezuela. A top NYPD official told the New York Post. But they're managing to stay out of jail, just like in California, because of their ages and uh, the fact that the Empire State, New York's lenient criminal justice laws, Detective Bureau Assistant Chief Jason Savino said. Jason Savino said that. I grew up with the Savino family in Chicago. Twelve kids in the Savino family. Yeah, great, uh, great uh, family, great Chicago family, the Savino family. Um, yeah, great stuff, Mr. Savino. Mott's, Mott's, uh, construction company. You know, great stuff. Should see Christmas at their house. It's the greatest. But uh, I digress. So uh, there you have uh, Savino, the detective, saying, you have individuals that are brazen. We know they have access to guns. Evident by the uh, the fact that they've done gunpoint robberies and they're they've been brazen enough to uh, showcase pistols in and around their social media, posting social media, right? So so in Chicago, they're waiting for a gang war between Trend de Aragua and the local Chicago gangs, and I'm with uh, the Chicago games gangs. I'm on the side of the Chicago gangs in this particular conflict, and and in New York. Uh, Trend de Aragua is all of the streets, and in Indianapolis, and and uh, and in Denver. But we know about Aurora, Colorado, and President Trump went to Aurora, Colorado, and he talked about this Trend de Aragua Venezuelan gang taking over apartment complexes, multiple apartment complexes, not just an apartment here, an apartment there, not just a building, but an apartment complex here, an apartment complex there, in Aurora, Colorado, not known for gang activity until Joe Biden and Kamala Harris decided to open our border and wave in thousands and thousands of Venezuelan gang members. They've committed murders and rapes, and, uh, you know, they're gangs from Venezuela. They're not the good guys, and neither are the Democrats, by the way. So here's uh, J.D. Vance and Martha Reddits yesterday on This Week. Uh, it used to be a news show of some kind, and listen to how this goes. Because Martha Reddits wants to stop J.D. Vance, cut him off rudely, abruptly, uh, step on him, push him back, because she knows exactly what's happening. But listen to this. She admits that multiple 
apartment complexes have been taken over in Aurora, Colorado by Venezuelan gang members. There's video you've probably seen of these armed gang members going in. One guy with a long gun, like an AR-15 style rifle, another guy with a pistol attacking somebody's front door. A poor woman in the apartment across the hall has a doorbell, like a ring camera, got the video, and now she's terrified uh, because this is what you know, terror is all about. J.D. Vance and Martha Raddatz yesterday. President Trump was actually in Aurora, Colorado, talking to people on the ground. And what we're hearing, of course, Martha, is that people are terrified by what has happened with some of these Venezuelan gangs. Sen Senator and Vance, I I'm going to stop you because I know exactly what happened. Martha. I'm going to stop you. I'm going to stop you. Now, what did he say? He said he went there and he's talking to people who have been terrorized and terrified by Venezuelan gangs. I'm going to stop you. I'm going to end, end that curtness and a furrowed brow and a curled lip. And, and again, a woman that I used to know that I used to uh, work with when I was at the Pentagon. She was ABC at the Pentagon. I was CNN at the Pentagon. And that's, I'm going to stop because I know exactly what happened. And it uh, went from there. The incidents were limited to a handful incidents. of apartment conflicts uh, apartment complexes and the mayor said our dedicated police officers have acted on those concerns a handful of problems only martha do you hear yourself only <laughs> a handful of apartment complexes in america were taken over by venezuelan gangs and donald trump is the problem and not kamala harris's open border americans are so fed up with what's going on and they have every right to be uh, honestly, that and the news media, the news media is the most corrupt institution of the United States of America. Just a huge, huge uh, problem for everything, for maintaining our republic, our constitution, for um, having a civil conversation on the great issues of our day. This is a great issue. And she shouts down a senator who's running for vice president uh, because only a handful, and he nailed her uh, perfectly, and he does it with a smile, which is one of the things that's wonderful about him. Only, only a handful of apartment complexes. Yeah, that's no big deal. Taken over by gangs. That's, uh, and that honestly, he, uh, uh, J.D. Vance responded perfectly. Martha, Just, do you hear yourself? Honestly, do you hear yourself? You say it's no big deal that uh, gangs from Venezuela that are operating in, in New York, in Chicago, in Denver, and in Aurora, Colorado, have taken over multiple, only a handful. Again, you know, only a, a, for the love of, come on, only a handful of women have been raped and murdered by Venezuelan gang members too. And she's scoffing, snorting, brushing it off. J.D. Vance having none of it. I really find this exchange, Martha, sort of interesting because you seem to be more focused with nitpicking everything that Donald Trump has said rather than acknowledging that apartment complexes in the United States of America are being taken over by violent gangs. Uh, from Venezuela, you know, at least have American gangs, uh, violent gangs take over the apartment complexes for the love of Mike. And then every headline... Virtually every headline from all the left-wing media, all the headlines are um, J.D. Vance says it's nitpicking, nitpicking. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, what are you talking about? That fact that President Trump raised an eyebrow at Venezuelan gangs taking over apartment complexes in Aurora, Colorado. J.D. Vance. I worry so much more about that problem than anything else here. We've got to get American communities in a safe space again. And unfortunately, when you let people in by the millions, most of whom are unvetted, most of whom you don't know who they really are, you're going to have problems like this. Kamala Harris, 94 executive orders that undid Donald Trump's successful border policies. We knew this stuff would happen. That's, they that's... dragged about opening the border, and now we have the consequences, and we're living with it. Rolling Stone, Vance stands behind Trump's lies about migrants. It's not about migrants. It's about gang members from Venezuela. I work with migrants from England and Canada and, you know, 
uh, please. We can do so much better, but frankly, we're not going to do better, Martha, unless Donald Trump calls this stuff out. I'm glad that he did. Okay, let's let's just uh, let's just end that with they did not invade or take over the city, as Donald Trump said. Uh, I, I want to move on to just a few women. apartment complexes. No big deal. A few apartment complexes that the mayor did not uh, seem was invading the entire city. Yeah, it's not invading the entire city, right? Yeah, and the headlines are. Vance defends Trump's, quote, exaggerated, end quote, claims of Aurora. Really, Trump exaggerated? Uh, What's more dangerous, Trump drawing attention to Venezuelan gangs taking over apartment complexes in Aurora, Colorado, of all places, while they're marauding through New York and Chicago and Denver and elsewhere, Indianapolis, for the love of Mike. The news media should be putting a spotlight on this, but because... The Democrat Party did it. The news media is burying it and attacking anyone that brings it up. And the mocking headlines everywhere. Vance defends Trump. Just uh, amazing stuff. And nitpicking. They're attacking nitpicking. Yeah, yeah, they are nitpicking. Maybe you should uh, be worried about gangs taking over. And uh, how many, Martha, how many gang members have to be in a uh, the city of Aurora, Colorado, before you call it an invasion? Give me a number, Martha. Martha, do you hear yourself? Yeah, headlines like J.D. Vance melts down at ABC Fact Check. Quote, nitpicking everything Donald Trump has said. That's uh, the headline. Our uh, media, the most corrupt institution in America, keep them away from the children. Let's uh, let's grab a phone call, Michael. Let's go to Matt calling from St. Louis, Missouri. Matthew, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Hey, Chris. Happy Columbus Day in uh, Martha Ratopia. <laughs> and a quick aside from what I called about, I, I think this um, Ben Miller guy, the Golden Street Media may have just conflated his name with his pronouns, so maybe he's got they, them pronouns or something. Yeah, we did um, that. Yeah, we were doing that in our meeting. Oh, so yeah, yeah, them. Yeah, they, they, them pronouns. We, we, we went there also. <laughs> hey, but, um, and I may have misled Jeff uh, inadvertently, thinking it was a traditional joke with a punchline. It's more of an observation, but you mentioned uh, Martha Raddatz, you mentioned uh, Focahontas, Elizabeth Warren, and you mentioned Kamala in your opening segment. And um, the thing all three have in common, any idea what that would be? I, I just, I, nothing that I, I want to say out loud here. <laughs> well, that's good. Um, so all three always sound when they're talking like they're on the verge of crying, just breaking down in, in on a big boohoo session. Um, and the difference is in Martha Raddatz's case, hers is more like the ball of ice cream just fell off the top of her ice cream cone and hit the ground. Um, for Focahontas, hers has got more of a whiny quality to it. And then, of course, Kakala, um, hers is just a nasally kind of I'm about to cry. So you're right about all that. I'm nodding. I'm nodding in agreement here. Jeff is applauding uh, under glass like pheasant. The incidents were limited to a handful of apartment conflicts, uh, apartment complexes, a handful of problems. Martha, do you hear yourself? Only a handful of apartment complexes in America were taken over by Venezuelan gangs, and Donald Trump is the problem? (laughs) Well, yeah, with ABC News and NBC News and CBS News and the New York Times and the Washington Post, which are corrupt institutions uh, operated by corrupt individuals who are personally corrupt people, and their institutions by extension, are a reflection of their personal corruption. And they're, they're in politics, not journalism, and they're there to uh, be bootlicks for the Democrat Party. That's, that's where we are in the United States. And, and honestly, our, our Constitution Republic cannot function properly with this profoundly corrupt fourth estate. The fourth estate, the, the ultimate check in our system of checks and balances And they have been bought and paid for. They're the referee that has been bribed. And it's not like there are one or two of them. There there are plane loads of them. And they're corrupt. Corrupt as as heck. Corrupt corrupt as all get out. 
They, they truly are just amazing. So uh, J.D. Vance did a great job, as always. You hear the crack in his voice. The crack in his voice is funny. We are laughing about the crack in his voice when he said, Martha, are, are, can, are you, can you, yourself? Martha, do you hear yourself? <laughs> do you hear yourself? Come on. It's no big deal. It's just Aurora, Colorado, a handful of apartment complexes taken over by Venezuelan gangs. Come on. Why would Trump make anything of that? That's that's so people will be murdered and raped and there will be fatal drug overdoses and and the extortion and the shakedowns and the the threats and the guns and we have the video. No, did you notice? I'm I'm pretty sure she didn't show the video of the gang members, uh, including one with a rifle, a combat style assault rifle, um, going into the apartment building and, and terrorizing the people in their apartment and pounding at the doors and stuff. They didn't show that on ABC News, right? Now, I'm, again, I, uh, truth is, I didn't watch the whole show yesterday. I saw clips. But from what I saw, ABC News and Martha Raddatz did not show the video that. If you watch Newsmax TV, you're familiar with the video. If you watch uh, Fox News, you're familiar with the video. If you get your, your news from a variety of online sources, uh, the Daily Caller and so on, then you've seen the video. But if you depend on CNN or, or for that matter, CBS and NBC and ABC for your news, you never, you never see that because they don't show it. So you, your, your ignorance may be bliss, but it is ignorance nonetheless. Just uh, just amazing. Mm-mm-mm. Bop, bop, ba. That's a crazy thing. And um, there is more because the Speaker of the House went on to the NBC equivalent, and that is Meet the Press, their Sunday morning news show. And I want to get to that in uh, in just a minute, too. But right now, let's go to, let's take another telephone call. Let's go to Joe listening on the great WLS out of Chicago, where I'm going to be later this week for my Friday night politics and a pint. Uh, but let's go to Joe calling from Dundee, Illinois. Joseph, you're on the Chris, hey, Chris. Plant Show. Hey, Joe. Hey, Chris. That, that's a beautiful thing. Uh, yeah, Mar- Mar- Martha Radish's, uh, you know, uh, claims to be uh, down the center. But every time I see her talk, She's, you know, trying to smack down uh, the right. You know, I, I'm, I'm not getting that. Uh, you know, if you're going to be a news reporter, uh, just do that. But, uh, you know, I think she's uh, full of uh, uh, barrel of monkeys. <laughs> full of barrel monkeys. See, yeah. you're, that's so old-fashioned of you, Joe, the... The idea that a, a journalist would be right down the middle. You know, when you travel in left-wing circles, if there are other people around you who are more left-wing than you are, and it's Bernie Sanders, who's a socialist and a Bolshevik, who honeymooned in the Soviet Union and and uh, laments the, the fall of the Soviet Union almost as much as, as Vladimir Putin does, uh, you know, when you've got these hardcore left people around you, and you're just ordinary kind of uh, Alexandria Casio Cortez, left wing, stupid, <laughs> ignorant. You know, then you think that you're kind of uh, a, a centrist. You're you're center left. You're not real left. But they all parrot the same talking points. The exact same words and phrases are used by all the. And again, I used to know Martha Raddatz and. She worked in the office next door for a period of time when I was at the Pentagon, uh, covering the Pentagon. And and they just, they live in a left-wing world where if you're not a, an out-of-the-closet communist, then you think that you're, you know, kind of a centrist. But when it comes to journalism, Joe, what uh, Martha Raddatz and what ABC News should have been doing yesterday is the story on the terrorism of Trent de Aragua taking over just a handful of apartment complexes in, of all mm-hmm. places, Aurora, Colorado. Uh, and, and instead, what they do is they normalize it, Joe. They, they make it seem as though if you raise an eyebrow that you're the one out of the mainstream. And the mainstream just says, what? There's nothing wrong. It's just a handful of apartment complexes in Aurora, Colorado that have been taken over 
by a Venezuelan gang known as Tren de Aragua. And there are so many Tren de Aragua in Chicago that there are news reports in the Sun-Times and the Tribune in Chicago about the local gangs uh, maybe organizing to stand up and go after the Venezuelan gangs. A story today about uh, all the, the gang members, including kids, young boys as young as 11, doing armed robberies in Times Square and elsewhere in New York. And and Martha Raddatz still says, well, what's the big deal, Joe? There's nothing to, come on, uh, Trump is exaggerating. They didn't take over. They didn't invade. So they want, uh, they want to pick nits about the word that was used instead of the the big picture here and the real picture. And and that's where our culture comes undone, comes undone because of this corrupt news media. You know, we need to have honest and open discussions based on on uh, uh, facts about these important issues. And it all goes back to the open border. And Martha Raddatz and ABC News, they know that that may reflect negatively on the Democrats. And there's an election coming up and the media is doing everything they can to win it for the Democrats. Right, Joe? Uh, hey, Chris. Yeah. Uh, you know, if, if, if Trump gets in, I would love to see him send the United States military across the border to uh, get control of these, uh, you know, gangs down in uh, Mexico. I well, you go in there. Yeah. I got to tell you, you know, the uh, the the cartels. Uh, you know, bloody. Yeah. Yeah. It would be it would effectively be war. I mean, you work with the uh, the Mexican government, which mm-hmm. we've done in the past to target the cartels and the cartels kill literally hundreds of thousands of people over time. Yeah. Yeah. And they enslave not people war on us. Or, yeah, well, right. I and, I, you know, I mean, look, we have more than 100,000 fatal drug overdoses every year in mm-hmm. the United States. Now, most of that as a result of drugs coming across our southern border. Uh, an awful they're lot of right it is... here in Chicago, Chris, and yeah. they're well-armed. That's all i got to tell you. Yeah. And uh, if, if, if that's what it takes, is to send uh, the United States military down there if uh, Mr. Trump gets in, uh, uh, I'm all for, you know, I mean, you know, what else are you going to do? <laughs> you know? What else I mean, are you going to do? The people down there are for the cartels, you know. Well, let me let me remind uh, Joe that 100,000 fatal drug overdoses last year, 100,000 that number dead Americans from fatal drug overdoses in one year. That number is greater. That number is greater than the number of Americans killed in the entire Vietnam War, the entire Korean War, and the entire post 9/11 wars combined. All three all three wars yeah. combined, the Vietnam War, the Korean War, and the post 9/11 wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. Combine the Americans killed from those three wars. We had a number greater than that killed by fatal drug overdoses in 2023 and also in 2022. And Martha Raddatz isn't covering that. And and the Democrats don't give a flying hoot about any of that, Joe. Uh, I, I say go, I say go get them. Uh, my dad was in Korea. His brother made the invasion of uh, New Guinea and the Philippines by uh Grandfather was in France. I mean, come on now. Yeah. You know, uh, what does it take to uh, make a country free? Uh, not what's going on right now. That's all I got to say. Yeah, that's all you got to say. Joseph, thank you. You you know, it's, a, it's hard to argue. And I tell you, President Trump rises, raises an eyebrow and he calls it an invasion. Well, it's not an invasion. We found someone uh, in Colorado who says it's not an invasion. And ABC News wanting desperately to adopt whatever line uh, the Democrat Party would prefer. They go ahead and they adopt whatever line the Democrat Party would prefer. And they start parroting that party line. And that's why they're not journalists. They're they're Democrats. Just uh, just amazing. Mm-mm-mm. Man, oh, man, oh, man. Honestly. Just extraordinary stuff. Gangs have taken control of several of our properties in Aurora, Colorado. There is a post from CBZ Property Management, property management company in Aurora, Colorado. And uh, the, uh, the, the boss there, David Heights, David Heights, wrote out of Aurora, Colorado, is it just like former President Donald Trump, CBZ Management, took to X on Friday, uh, formerly known as Twitter, don't you? And uh, you got to say that every time, don't you? 
to uh, tell its side of the story regarding migrant gangs occupying apartments it operates in Aurora, Colorado. And he says, gangs have taken control of several of our properties in Aurora, Colorado. In an attempt to discredit this fact for political purposes and avoid governmental accountability, some have spread false information about our situation. Let's go straight to the record, he says. CBZ goes on to make seven additional posts, and I can't share all of them with you. It's only a three-hour show, but they uh, describe how a group of men beat an apartment complex employee, took over vacant apartments, extorted residents out of their rent money. Uh, He had gone to inspect a recently vacated three-bedroom apartment, uh, and you know, this is, this is what gangsterism does, and the Democrats are just fine with it. Now, a rare occurrence for such a large unit to inspect a three-bedroom apartment and <clears throat> said, found only a group of men already inside. And CBZ, the management company, posted about their employees when he refused their $500 bribe to overlook the situation. They brutally attacked him and beat him. After the attack on our CBZ representative, he began getting threatening text messages. Threatening because they take your phone and they're, you know, these are organized uh, uh, operations. And you've got to go in heavy with a heavy hand against the bad guys. But the news media mocks it, ridicules it, and importantly, normalizes it. They say that you are the problem, President Trump is the problem, for bringing it up. Right. And that's that's your Democrat Party. Honestly, just extraordinary stuff. Mm -mm -mm. I'm telling you. All right. Now I've got I've got more to get to because I want to get the Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson. He was on uh, NBC's Sunday morning show yesterday and they had a, a couple of moments, a couple of moments, too, because they're not doing news. They're doing something else. All right, let's go. Let's do it now. We've got a we've got a little bit of time now. Let's do it. Uh, Kristen Welker is the fanker. She's the fake anchor, not a journalist at all, just a Democrat on TV once again. And they all get paid millions and millions of dollars. Not that I'm envious of the millions and millions of dollars, but but there it is. Um, the uh, that uh, uh, Kristen Welker with the Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, who's not with the Trump campaign, is uh, uh, being pressured that President Trump should release results from a cognitive test, which he actually took when he was president, and Joe Biden has not. And the media doesn't demand a cognitive test for Joe Biden, who's obviously severely demented and and brain damaged. Kristen Welker. Should he release the results of the cognitive test? It's unnecessary. He's on display every minute. So it's unnecessary. What? You can see okay. that he, he didn't release his medical records. You don't want to know things like his cholesterol level, whether he's dealing with any issue that we may not know about, if he's going to be commander in chief. And he also said he would release cognitive Kristen, tests. listen to your question. Aced. Should he release that? The, the American people, Kristen, the American people don't care about the cholesterol level of Donald Trump. They care about the cost of living and the fact they cannot pay for groceries okay. because Her- Kamala Harris and Joe Biden's policies have Let- put them in that situation. Yeah, and uh, the cholesterol level. Uh, how about Joe Biden's brain, Kristen? You've ignored that for the last four years. I don't know. Do you have a TV where you are, Kristen? Because there's a lot of videotape I'd like to show you, uh, stuff that you haven't covered. The Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson. The medical records are irrelevant. Let's talk about things that the American people care about. That's why Donald Trump is surging in the polls, because he's doing that this- on stages, in interviews, nonstop around the clock, and Kamala Harris has done nothing. Every time she talks, her numbers go down because she is uniquely unqualified to be the commander-in-chief at one of the most dangerous times in the history of the country. Mr. Speaker. And she's cutting him off and stepping on him. Well, what about Donald Trump's cholesterol? What's his LDL, Mr. Speaker? We demand to know his LDL. What a, and and uh, Joe Biden's brain is like a, a splat at the bottom of a tall building. And she hasn't asked a question about his brain over the course of the last four years. The most corrupt institution in America. It is good to be a Democrat, isn't it? Kristen, listen to your question. (laughs) 
It's Indigenous Peoples Day. What do you do on Indigenous? What do you do? Not wear shoes? Uh, what? What? Uh, not make anything? What is that? I'm just saying. All right, let's go to the uh, let's go to the telephones. Let's go to uh, let's go to Mary Ellen, calling from the great state of Kentucky, listening on the wonderful WVLK. Mary Ellen, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Good morning, sir. Thank you for taking my call. I'm I'm an older woman. I'm not on Facebook or Tickety Talk or Instant, whatever. Uh huh. So I haven't really <laughs> shared this publicly. Uh huh. Um, but on the July 4th weekend, on that Sunday morning, I went to Mass early, and I was up and out and dressed, and I thought, well, what can I do? I didn't need to go to the grocery store. So I thought, well, I'll go to that store, where I was promptly jammed with a cart and mugged and relieved of my wallet and phone, as it turns out, by a Venezuelan woman, according to the police. They caught one of her accomplices. They did not catch her. But we have pictures of her from the closed-circuit TV. And... I mean, I, I'm really not even sure why I'm sharing this other than to warn other women to just be careful. And when you get that gut feeling, I mean, I actually went through the mental exercise of looking at her and saying to myself, stop. If this were a little blue eyed blonde, you wouldn't even think twice. You're, you're profiling. Stop it. And as it turns out, it was that gut feeling that you're not conscious of before it happens. And she got me. She got nine thousand five hundred and fifty four dollars. What? Now I got all that back. Yeah, I got that back, two credit cards and a debit card. And I had cash in my wallet and stamps and everything else you carry in your wallet, which I'm still working on, by the way. Three months and eleven days later, not that I'm counting. Right. But it's it's awful. She stole my public equanimity. And As my son says, Mama, you don't go shopping to keep an eye on other customers. Women go shopping to lose themselves. Well, you know, I'm confessing. I can't. I'm looking left. I'm looking right. I'm up and down. I, you know, I'm like, this is crazy. And you're in Kentucky. Do, I'm in Kentucky, of all places. Bluegrass, genteel, sweetheart, wonderful town. And the police and told you invaded. Venezuelans, and there was more than one of them, and the, the woman, uh, the primary woman got away, and they got almost $10,000 from you, and months later, you're still trying to set everything straight. And this is the, I'm guessing that you're not voting Democrat come election day. No, I'm not. Yeah. Mary Ellen, God bless you. Thank you. I'm glad that you're okay. 